Number one, return of the break drums. If you don't know what the break drums are, it's basically regular drums. Classic drum break sounds like this. The problem of using this one as a more electronic dance music track is it is not dancey enough and it is full of kick drums. So you have to somehow make it fit into modern electronic dance music. You will see this new modern break drums in a lot of different genres. For example, a track from Inela, Distorted Sound. We are deviating from floor to the floor quite a bit. Let's take a look at one of the most famous deep melodic and progressive house label, Anjuna Deep. Their new releases, you will see that drum breaks are everywhere. Everywhere filled with drum breaks. You may wonder how do we get that, that modern drum sound. Let's do it together. The first thing, get this analog beefy kick. This analog kick sounds really cool beef right that's what we are looking for but before i even put my kick down i want to grab a snare because the snare is trying to be off beat all the time so it will be our kind of a reference point i want something like a rip and we can support it with another analog snare and i'm gonna also get something like this right i'm gonna just use the rim first now I can play around with my kick pattern because kick patterns are more free in break drum so you can come up with your own but don't oversaturate your track with the kick make it more minimal right very simple very straightforward now do it two bars alternate the pattern even more maybe double here other thing with the drum breaks is there's always cool hi-hat shuffles and that's what we're gonna do and you want to shuffle as much as possible so you can add something like velocity device make it a bit random and then you can actually change the length of these guys a little bit give it fade in and out maybe third one as well i'm gonna keep it simple so we have something like this now and then we can actually panning a bit right and left and then of course we would like to have that kick pumping your hi-hat a little bit but the most important element in this type of breaks is shuffling. So you can shuffle hi-hats like we already did here. Other thing is actually shuffling your percussion. So we had this snare. Had a couple of other snares. I'm going to put here, make it a bit dark version of this. Volume it down, put a filter. Then maybe you can shuffle a bit more, maybe the tail. We need a longer version of it. One more of these. This is the good side of making this type of sound because it adds a lot of creativity. Let me try with this as well. Maybe we should layer them slightly. Of course, when you use this type of drums, you need a room. Nobody plays the drums in space, right? You need the feeling of the room and some delays, some reverbs. Let's get something from Arturia. I really enjoy this plate reverb. 100% wet. Start with these snares. More drive. This change immediately vibe of the sound. Let's stand a little bit hats as well. Get this sizzling going on. The one thing that's missing, like this off hat going on as well, we still want this dance pattern, right? I'm gonna continue with our unlock drum samples. Let's get an open hat. Weirdish unlock sounds. Let me try this one first. I'm gonna also get something like classic off hat. I have a sound in my mind, so I already know what I want. Making it more humanized is the key here. Make the length of this one a bit slightly changing. Grab an LFO, put it here, put it on the random, map it to, let's length it up and put it into random. We're gonna do something like this, right? Other thing, of course, I want a bit groove. I can just import any groove from my groove library. Get a bit random, get a bit velocity, get a bit timing, get a bit quantization. So we have different velocities, a bit off-grid and on-grid stuff going on. The same thing applies to other head as well. You see the, the velocity is always same. 
bum. This is a bit too much. Bring this down up a little bit. This is a very cool drum rack already, right? The other thing that you can do, slap in a percussion loop from more percussion samples. Side chain from the kick. I'm gonna group everything together, not the kick, because I like to process my kick with the bass. Glue them together. One final stage, adding a bit distortion so that things get a bit fuller like a real drum. Bring a knee return channel, a saturator there. I'm gonna use PSP saturator. So let's solo this and sand quite a bit there. I'm going really aggressive because I want to get this body out. And of course, we will use every EQ on top of that. And then we will blend in this one with the original sound slightly. If you compare this one to the previous break drums that we had, more clean organic sound, more like EDMs, and if you fill up the background a little bit, If you are enjoying the video up to now, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. <laughs> Number two, another very trendy thing lately is actually increase of the BPM and making it harder rumble low ends. You see, for example, house tracks with the rumble low end, and it's really interesting how they approach it. But of course, these are not classic rumbles. These are what I call hybrid rumbles. Let's do one together so that you understand a bit. I'm gonna go to our peak time kicks. Grab something like this. It doesn't need to be super distorted for this to work. Let's create a new channel, Ctrl T, and then we are gonna go to kick over here, post FX, and then we are gonna put in and listen. Now we are here in the kick over here. You get a delay or reverb or both of them at the same time and distort a lot and low pass so that we get this rumbly sub bass. Let's distort it a little bit as well. Control the gain. And then what do you want to do? Add a compressor, side chain to kick so that you can have this pumping going on. One important thing over here is actually bringing down the size and I'm going to put in high mode so that it's not really super stereo. Resample this one more time so that I can manually control the transient of the rumble. Put into resampling mode, solo this, solo this, put into recording and just play. Now, duplicate the kick, freeze that one as well and flatten. It gets much easier to actually control your dynamic. I will definitely prefer a shorter kick, arrange a little bit here. Again, control with a bit EQ. I will keep it simple this way. I have full tutorial over here on how to make interesting techno sub rumbles. If you want more complicated and advanced version of it, take a look at this. So together they sound something like this. The hybrid part comes in when you also use the typical elements from your own genre. Let's say you are making kind of progressive house and you enjoy this type of driving low end, right? Let's get the div up, but you can use any synthesizers. I'm gonna grab something from my Sapphire analog bass sounds, pull interesting sounds over here. Let's put really simple driving pattern and then I'm gonna just automate the velocity slightly a bit. Move this thing a bit here, lax from the grid. And let's pick a cool preset from the pack. Add that compressor side chain to the new bass as well. And cut of course super low so that it doesn't clutter with the rumble. Finally, I'm gonna shape the kick a little bit more. And of course, let's increase the BPM. I actually didn't like the first kick, so let's switch it to another one from the pack. I think this one works a bit better. Another techno trick, we can take that kick sound, make a tom out of it. The way you do it, basically you shorten it up and then use it like a tom. Let's click here, put another EQ here, pick the areas that we enjoy. Here we go, we have this hybrid low end. Let me add a couple of more elements so that you understand how it sounds together with the other elements. Number three, use of big 
fat who kill eat some. This didn't happen this year, but I think it get extremely popular this year due to a couple of artists really abusing the method. It sounds something like this. You will especially hear this type of sound quite a little bit in afterlife. You should consider two things when you are making this type of sounds. The first one, of course, driving the sound or overdriving the sound or distorting the sound so that it gets really rich on the harmonics. And the second trick that a lot of people sleep on is actually using frequency modulation so that it doesn't sound any common type of waveform that you will hear with all other analog synthesizers. Let's take a look at the sound in solo. So we have two oscillators here. The first one is sawtooth and square wave together. And there's an LFO in the square wave form. And the second one is simply sine wave. If I put an oscillator too, you will hear this weird squarish sine wave sound. The main reason for this is this cross modulation button and these LFOs modulating the pitch of the wave as well. Let's make it a bit more sine wave -ish. first. Bring this down. The LFO doesn't control the cross modulation. Cross modulation is FM modulation basically. And then we take off this one. It's getting more like sine wave, right? Let's bring this one to the middle as well. Right? Let's put an octave up. Now it's more or less distort the sine wave. So starting point is really, really simple in that sense. If I bring back to the 16 here, first we have this LFO modulating the pitch. Actually, it's easier if I put a high octave like this, put it in and play with the rate. So that small pitch modulation over here, on top of that, this thing modulates each other. So we have the thing, so we don't need to think about the pitch. If I take the synth off, the pitch will be all over the place, but if we activate the scene and do it one more time. Basically this oscillator coming in and modulating this oscillator, changing each other's waveform, creating this very unique, very fat sound together. Putting this down. And then we have this LFO2, this one still modulating take off again everything, we will hear actually the first oscillator. This one clearly soft to the square wave, you can hear it a bit clearly, but it's also a bit distorted so we are getting all this fuzz on top end. What happens that when you add all this cross modulation, so the oscillators are bending each other and then bring the LFO, very unique sound, right? And of course, on top of that, we have this envelope so that it is like plucky, right? And of course, magic happens when you turn on the delay and plate. And altogether, they sound like this.